Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today we're ending the, nearing the end of my uh, teaching on 10 reasons it's better to have the Holy Spirit. This coming uh, Friday, tomorrow, will be my last day to teach on this, and we're offering this little booklet. It's just a brief summary of the teaching that I've done, and this is our free gift to you. So if you would like to take advantage of it, please go to the effort because we're nearing the end of this teaching. I also have CDs and DVDs and uh, they would be a real blessing to you. So we're now talking about the tenth of these ten reasons why it's better to have the Holy Spirit in us than it is to have Jesus in His physical body with us. And this is taken from John chapter 16 in verse 7. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I WILL SEND HIM UNTO YOU. AND SO THIS IS THE VERSE THAT I STARTED WITH. JESUS SAID THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT, IT'S BETTER TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT THAN IT IS TO HAVE HIM. NOW, OF COURSE, WE HAVE HIM THROUGH THE HOLY SPIRIT BECAUSE THE FATHER, SON, AND THE HOLY SPIRIT ARE ALL ONE, AND THE LORD LIVES IN US THROUGH THE INDWELLING PRESENCE OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT STILL, THIS IS A RADICAL STATEMENT. AND I I JUST WANT TO CONTINUE ON READING HERE. IN VERSE uh, 8, HE SAYS, AND WHEN HE HAS COME, HE WILL REPROVE THE WORLD OF SIN AND OF RIGHTEOUSNESS AND OF JUDGMENT. NOW, SOME PEOPLE HAVE TAKEN THIS AND SAID THAT THIS, WHEN HE SAYS HE WILL REPROVE THE WORLD, IT'S TALKING ABOUT HE ONLY REPROVES THE WORLD OF THE UNSAVED, IS WHAT THEY'RE TALKING ABOUT, OF SIN AND THE SIN OF NOT BELIEVING ON HIM. AND I CAN UNDERSTAND WHAT THEY'RE SAYING, AND I'M NOT OUT TO JUST TOTALLY DISCREDIT THAT, BUT THEN IT GOES ON TO SAY OF RIGHTEOUSNESS, NOT UNRIGHTEOUSNESS, BUT RIGHTEOUSNESS AND OF JUDGMENT, BECAUSE THE PRINCE OF THIS WORLD IS JUDGED. SO I DON'T BELIEVE THAT THIS IS LIMITED TO JUST THE UNBELIEVERS THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT CONVICTS OF THIS SIN, BUT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT TWO BELIEVERS. HERE'S ONE OF THE MINISTRIES OF THE HOLY SPIRIT IS THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT CONVICTS OF SIN AND OF RIGHTEOUSNESS AND OF JUDGMENT. NOW, TRADITIONALLY, MOST PEOPLE INTERPRET THIS IN A NEGATIVE WAY, THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT IS HERE TO MAKE YOU FEEL GUILTY EVERY TIME YOU SIN. HE'S GOING TO SHOW YOU THAT YOU'RE A SINNER AND THAT YOU HAVE BECOME UNRIGHTEOUS, AND IF YOU DON'T REPENT THE WRATH OF GOD, JUDGMENT IS GOING TO COME UPON YOU. THAT'S THE WAY THAT MOST PEOPLE HAVE INTERPRETED THAT. AND I BELIEVE THAT JESUS KNEW IT WOULD BE MISINTERPRETED, AND SO HE WENT ON TO EXPLAIN IT. AND LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 9. IT SAYS, OF SIN, BECAUSE THEY BELIEVE NOT ON ME. NOW, I'VE GOT TODAY AND TOMORROW BEFORE I FINISH THIS SERIES, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, I'M GOING TO BE HARD-PRESSED TO GET EVERYTHING I WOULD LIKE TO SAY INTO THESE TWO-DAY BROADCASTS. AND SO, AGAIN, I'VE GOT A TEACHING ON THE POSITIVE MINISTRY OF THE HOLY SPIRIT THAT WOULD GO INTO THIS POINT THAT I'M MAKING, AND IT WOULD would EXPAND ON IT TREMENDOUSLY. BUT IT SAYS, OF SIN, NOT OF SINS, PLURAL, BUT OF SIN, A SINGULAR SIN, BECAUSE THEY BELIEVE NOT ON ME. NOW, AGAIN, I DON'T BELIEVE THAT THIS IS LIMITED ONLY TO UNBELIEVERS. THIS IS TO UNBELIEVERS AND EVEN TO BELIEVERS. THE SIN THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT CONVICTS US OVER IS THE SIN OF NOT BELIEVING ON JESUS, NOT THE SIN OF ADULTERY, NOT THE SIN OF HOMOSEXUALITY, NOT THE SIN OF LYING OR STEALING. IT'S THE SIN OF NOT BELIEVING ON HIM. AND THAT'S A POSITIVE MINISTRY INSTEAD OF A NEGATIVE THING. INSTEAD OF THE HOLY SPIRIT SAYING, YOU COMMITTED ADULTERY. I'M ANGRY AT YOU. SEE, IT'S NOT THAT KIND OF A MINISTRY. IT'S LIKE, WHY DID YOU COMMIT ADULTERY? WHY ISN'T JESUS ENOUGH FOR YOU? WHY ISN'T THE MATE THAT GOD GAVE YOU ENOUGH FOR YOU? YOU KNOW, I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME TO TURN OVER AND READ THESE VERSES, BUT IF YOU WERE TO LOOK IN uh, 2 SAMUEL, CHAPTER 12, WHERE DAVID HAD COMMITTED ADULTERY WITH Bathsheba, 
AND THEN NATHAN THE PROPHET CAME AND REBUKED HIM FOR IT. IF YOU READ THOSE VERSES, THE LORD SAID UNTO HIM THROUGH NATHAN, HE SAYS, DAVID, HOW COULD YOU HAVE DONE THIS GREAT WICKEDNESS AND HAVE SINNED AGAINST ME? YOU HAVEN'T DESPISED PEOPLE. YOU'VE DESPISED ME. AND YOU KNOW, THE LORD SAID IN MARK CHAPTER 10 THAT FROM THE BEGINNING OF CREATION, GOD MADE A MALE AND FEMALE. HE NEVER INTENDED FOR A MAN TO HAVE MULTIPLE WIVES. HE NEVER INTENDED ALL OF THIS DIVORCE AND REMARRIAGE AND STUFF. GOD INTENDED ONE MAN AND ONE WOMAN TO STAY TOGETHER FOR LIFE. NOW, THERE'S GRACE AND THERE'S FORGIVENESS IF THAT DOESN'T COME TO PASS, BUT THAT WAS GOD'S INTENT. AND YET, OVER IN 2 SAMUEL CHAPTER 12, WHEN HE WAS TALKING TO DAVID ABOUT HIS SIN WITH BATHSHEBA, DAVID ALREADY HAD 13 WIVES, AND THE LORD SAID, I WOULD HAVE GIVEN YOU MORE. I GAVE YOU YOUR MASTER'S WIVES, AND I WOULD HAVE GIVEN YOU MORE IF YOU WOULD HAVE ASKED ME. NOW, THAT'S SOMETHING THAT NEVER WAS HIS PERFECT WILL. THAT WASN'T WHAT HE INTENDED. AND EVEN IN MARK CHAPTER 10, WHEN HE WAS ASKED ABOUT DIVORCE AND REMARRIAGE, HE SAYS, IT WAS BECAUSE OF YOUR HARDNESS OF HEART THAT MOSES ALLOWED YOU TO DIVORCE AND REMARRY AND DO ALL OF THESE THINGS. BUT THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT GOD INTENDED IT. SO IT WASN'T GOD'S PERFECT WILL. AND YET, HE SAID, DAVID, I WOULD HAVE GIVEN YOU EVEN MORE WIVES. HE ALREADY HAD 13. I'D HAVE GIVEN YOU MORE IF YOU'D HAVE ASKED ME. IT WASN'T SO MUCH THE ADULTERY THAT WAS BAD. I'M NOT BY ANY MEANS EXCUSING ADULTERY. ADULTERY IS WRONG. AND ADULTERY HURTS THE ADULTERESS, THE ADULTERER, AND IT HURTS EVERYBODY ASSOCIATED. IT HURTS THE WITNESS. IT'S WRONG ON SO MANY LEVELS. I AM NOT SAYING ADULTERY IS OKAY, BUT WORSE THAN THE ADULTERY IS THE FACT THAT GOD SAID, HOW COULD YOU HAVE DESPISED ME AND HAVE DONE THIS? SEE, MOST PEOPLE, THEY LOOK AT THEIR ACTIONS AND THEY THINK, WELL, MAN, I'M STRUGGLING WITH ALCOHOL. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT THE REAL PROBLEM IS? YOU AREN'T TRUSTING JESUS. YOU'VE GOT SOMETHING IN YOUR LIFE THAT'S NEGATIVE. ALCOHOL COSTS YOU A LOT OF MONEY. IT HURTS YOUR BODY. IF YOU DRINK ENOUGH OF IT, YOU CAN DIE OF CIROSIS OF THE LIVER. YOU you COULD KILL YOURSELF OR KILL SOMEBODY ELSE DRIVING AND DOING THINGS LIKE THAT. YOU GET SHAME ASSOCIATED WITH IT. IT CAUSES REJECTION. IF YOU'RE A CHRISTIAN, IT JUST CAUSES A TERRIBLE WITNESS. THERE'S JUST SO MANY NEGATIVES ASSOCIATED WITH IT. WHY WOULD A PERSON JUST LIVE AS A DRUNK? YOU KNOW WHY? IT'S BECAUSE THEY'VE GOT PROBLEMS, AND RATHER THAN FACE THOSE PROBLEMS HEAD ON, THROW THEM OVER ON THE LORD, AND RECEIVE HIS COMFORT, YOU GO TO A BOTTLE SO THAT YOU CAN SIT THERE AND NUMB YOURSELF. TO YOUR PROBLEMS, AND you can, YOU CAN GET IT OUT OF YOUR MIND, AND FOR A BRIEF PERIOD OF TIME, YOU'LL FEEL OKAY. OF COURSE, THE NEXT DAY, YOU HAVE hung o- HANGOVER, AND YOU FEEL WORSE THAN YOU DID, AND YOU'RE POORER THAN YOU WERE, AND YOU'RE MORE ASHAMED, AND YOU'RE WORSE, AND THERE'S SO MANY NEGATIVE THINGS, BUT YOUR PROBLEMS ARE SO BAD THAT FOR THAT BRIEF PERIOD OF TIME, YOU'RE WILLING TO GO TO A BOTTLE OR TO TAKE A DRUG. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A REASON THEY CALL THAT STUFF DOPE. I'M NOT AGAINST YOU. I LOVE YOU, BUT I'M SAYING THAT FOR YOU, TO TAKE DOPE, AGAIN, IT'S EXPENSIVE. YOU'RE RUNNING THE RISK WITH THIS FENTANYL STUFF THAT'S COMING IN TODAY. JUST A FRACTION OF A TINY BIT OF THAT CAN KILL YOU. IT'S LIKE PLAYING RUSSIAN ROULETTE. THERE'S JUST SO MANY REASONS NOT TO DO IT. WHY WOULD SOMEBODY DO THAT? ANY PERSON WHO TURNS TO DRUGS OR TO ALCOHOL, YOU'RE SAYING THAT YOUR LIFE IS IN SUCH A MESS THAT THIS BRIEF RESPITE THAT YOU HAVE, THIS BRIEF PERIOD OF TIME, IS WORTH IT FOR ALL OF THE NEGATIVE CONSEQUENCES THAT COME WITH IT. YOU KNOW WHAT THE REAL PROBLEM IS? IT'S NOT THE DRUGS. IT'S NOT THE ALCOHOL. IT'S NOT ALL OF THESE THINGS. IT'S THE FACT THAT YOU AREN'T TRUSTING JESUS. THIS IS WHAT THE HOLY SPIRIT IS SENT TO DO. HE WILL CONVICT OF SIN, NOT SINS, PLURAL. EVERY SIN, IF YOU PEEL BACK THE LAYERS AND GO DEEP ENOUGH, EVERY SIN REALLY JUST COMES DOWN TO, WHY AREN'T YOU IN RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD? YOU KNOW, WHEN JOSEPH WAS TEMPTED BY POTIPHAR'S WIFE AND SHE TRIED TO GET HIM TO HAVE SEX WITH HER, HE SAYS, HOW COULD I DO THIS GREAT WICKEDNESS AND SIN AGAINST GOD? NOW, IT WOULD HAVE BEEN A SIN AGAINST POTIPHAR, THE HUSBAND. IT WOULD HAVE BEEN A SIN AGAINST THE WIFE. IT WOULD HAVE BEEN A SIN AGAINST HIS FAMILY. AND IT WOULD HAVE BEEN WRONG ON SO MANY LEVELS IF HE HAD HAD SEXUAL RELATIONSHIPS WITH POTIPHAR'S WIFE. BUT HE SAID, AND THIS IS THE REASON THAT HE WAS ABLE TO MAINTAIN HIS INTEGRITY IS BECAUSE HE SAYS, HOW COULD I DO THIS GREAT WICKEDNESS AND SIN AGAINST GOD? SO THE ROOT OF ALL SIN REALLY IS THAT YOU JUST AREN'T TRUSTING GOD. IF YOU LIE, YOU KNOW WHY YOU LIE? 
BECAUSE YOU'RE AFRAID THAT IF THE TRUTH COMES OUT, IT MIGHT MAKE YOU LOOK BAD. YOU MIGHT SUFFER FOR IT. SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, YOU'RE GOING TO LIE. YOU'RE GOING TO MANIPULATE. YOU'RE GOING TO TAKE A HALF TRUTH AND PRESENT IT IN A WAY THAT MAKES YOU LOOK BETTER THAN WHAT IT REALLY IS. AND YOU KNOW WHY YOU DO THAT? BECAUSE YOU DON'T REALLY TRUST IN GOD. YOU AREN'T DEPENDING UPON GOD TO BE YOUR STRENGTH AND YOUR PROMOTION. YOU HAVE TO PROMOTE YOURSELF. SO YOU HAVE TO DO THINGS TO IMPROVE YOUR STANDING AND MAKE YOU LOOK BETTER. IF YOU PEEL BACK THE LAYERS, IT COMES DOWN YOU JUST DON'T REALLY TRUST GOD. YOU AREN'T TRUSTING HIM. YOU KNOW WHY YOU STEAL? BECAUSE YOU DON'T BELIEVE THAT GOD WILL BLESS THE WORK OF YOUR HANDS. AND YOU DON'T BELIEVE THAT HE WILL PROSPER YOU, THAT HE'S ALREADY COMMANDED A BLESSING UPON YOU, AND SO YOU'VE GOT TO DO SOMETHING, AND SO YOU GO AND YOU STEAL. YOU'RE DISHONEST. IT ALL COMES BACK TO THE FACT THAT YOU AREN'T TRUSTING GOD. AND SO THIS IS THE SIN THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT REPROVES PEOPLE OF. SEE, BECAUSE THE CHURCH HASN'T REALLY PRESENTED THIS THE WAY THAT IT SHOULD, MOST PEOPLE FEEL THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT IS THE ONE WHO CONDEMNS THEM. AND MAKES THEM FEEL MISERABLE. AND THEY KNOW IN THEIR HEART THAT THEY'VE DONE WRONG. AND THIS FEELING OF CONDEMNATION AND GUILT AND SHAME, THEY ATTRIBUTE IT TO THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT AGAIN, I WAS TEACHING ON THIS EARLIER IN THE WEEK. THE HOLY SPIRIT FOUR TIMES IN THESE VERY PASSAGES OF SCRIPTURE IS CALLED THE COMFORTER. THE HOLY SPIRIT IS NOT THE AFFLICTOR. HE'S NOT THE ONE WHO MAKES YOU FEEL MISERABLE. YES, THE HOLY SPIRIT KNOWS WHAT YOU'RE DOING, AND YES, IT GRIEVES THE HOLY SPIRIT WHEN HE SEES THAT YOU'RE OUT LIVING IN SIN, BUT YOU KNOW WHY IT GRIEVES HIM? BECAUSE HE LOVES YOU SO MUCH, AND HE KNOWS THAT SIN IS GOING TO BE AN INROAD OF SATAN INTO YOUR LIFE. SO WHEN HE DOES COME AND REPROVE YOU OF SIN, IT'S NOT GOING TO BE YOU LIED AGAIN, BUT IT'LL COME IN INSTEAD OF A CONDEMNING WAY, IT'LL BE A POSITIVE MINISTRY. HE'LL BE SAYING, I LOVE YOU. GOD LOVES YOU. WHY DO YOU HAVE TO WHY CAN'T YOU FACE THE THINGS THAT YOU'VE DONE WRONG AND LET GOD BE YOUR DEFENSE? WHY AREN'T YOU TRUSTING IN THE FACT THAT YOU'RE FORGIVEN THROUGH THE LORD? INSTEAD, YOU'RE HAVING TO HIDE AND YOU'RE HAVING TO DO THESE THINGS. SEE, THE HOLY SPIRIT IS NOT THE CONDEMNER. I BET YOU THAT MOST OF YOU, IF YOU'VE BEEN IN CHURCH VERY LONG, YOU'VE HEARD SOMEBODY STAND UP IN CHURCH AND TALK ABOUT THAT, YOU KNOW, I DID SOMETHING WRONG AND I WAS JUST MISERABLE AND THE HOLY SPIRIT WOULDN'T GIVE ME ANY PEACE AND FINALLY THEY STAND UP AND THEY CONFESS AND EVERYBODY APPLAUDS AND SAYS, OH, THIS IS GREAT. BUT REALLY, THAT'S A TERRIBLE TESTIMONY THAT the, that YOU HAD TO BE DRIVEN TO THE HOLY SPIRIT OR DRIVEN TO GOD OUT OF sh- SHAME AND GUILT AND THE FACT THAT YOU'RE BLAMING GOD AND SAYING THAT GOD JUST WOULDN'T GIVE ME ANY PEACE AND ANY REST. THAT'S NOT THE HOLY SPIRIT. THAT'S YOUR OWN CONSCIENCE THAT'S CONDEMNING YOU. AND THEN SATAN WILL GET INVOLVED AND AMPLIFY ON IT AND CONDEMN YOU OVER THINGS. BUT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 1, THERE IS NO CONDEMNATION TO THEM WHO ARE IN CHRIST JESUS. THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL CONVICT YOU OF SIN FOR THE PURPOSE OF BRINGING YOU BACK INTO TRUSTING JESUS BECAUSE IT'S ALL ABOUT HE LOVES YOU AND HE WANTS YOU TO DEPEND UPON HIM. INSTEAD OF DEPENDING ON A BOTTLE, INSTEAD OF DEPENDING ON A PILL, INSTEAD OF DEPENDING UPON YOUR LIES, INSTEAD OF DEPENDING UPON ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS THAT WE DO THAT ARE WRONG, HE WANTS US JUST TO TRUST IN HIM AND RELY ON HIM. YOU KNOW, OFTEN THE CHURCH WILL TEACH PEOPLE THAT IF YOU GO OUT AND COMMIT SEXUAL SINS, THAT, uh, YOU KNOW, THERE'S SO MANY SEXUALLY TRANSMITTED DISEASES THAT, MAN, YOU COULD, YOU COULD GET GONORRHEA, SYPHILIS, YOU CAN GET THIS, YOU COULD GET AIDS, YOU COULD GET ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND THEY TRY AND TALK PEOPLE OUT OF A SINFUL LIFESTYLE BY TALKING ABOUT THE CONSEQUENCES. AND THERE IS A PLACE FOR THAT BECAUSE THERE ARE CONSEQUENCES THAT COME WITH SIN. BUT LET ME ASK YOU THIS, WHAT WOULD HAPPEN IF SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER THEY CAME UP WITH A CURE FOR EVERY ONE OF THESE SEXUALLY TRANSMITTED DISEASES? AND SO NOW THERE WAS GOING TO BE NO CONSEQUENCES. THEY COULD DEAL WITH IT ALL AND EVERYTHING COULD BE CURED. WOULD THAT MEAN THAT IT WAS NOW OKAY? WELL, IF YOU FOLLOW THE LOGIC OF MOST CHRISTIANS, WELL, YEAH, BECAUSE THEY ARE PREACHING THE REASON YOU DON'T DO THIS IS BECAUSE OF HOW IT COULD HURT YOU. THE REASON YOU DON'T GO GET DRUNK IS BECAUSE IT COULD GIVE YOU CIROSIS OF THE LIVER. THE REASON YOU DON'T TAKE DRUGS IS BECAUSE YOU COULD DIE OF AN OVERDOSE. AND THEY TALK ABOUT ALL OF THESE CONSEQUENCES. YES, THOSE THINGS ARE REAL, AND I'M NOT SAYING THAT WE DON'T USE THAT AS PART OF OUR REASONING, BUT IF FOR SOME REASON THEY COULD TAKE AWAY ALL CHANCES OF YOU GETTING SEXUALLY TRANSMITTED DISEASES, IF YOU COULD NEVER KILL YOURSELF THROUGH CIROSIS OF THE LIVER OR KILL SOMEONE ELSE THROUGH DRUNK DRIVING, IF YOU COULD NEVER HAVE A DRUG OVERDOSE, AND IF
Did you know it would still be wrong? It would still be wrong for you to live those kind of a lifestyle because you aren't doing what God said. God said from the beginning of creation, He made them Adam and Eve. He created one man and one woman. And when you sit there and you go out and have extramarital relationships, you aren't trusting Jesus. You aren't trusting what He said. He intends for you to just have one mate. And you are exalting your own wisdom. You are leaning under your own understanding. You are discounting what God says. You think somehow or another you're wiser than God. That's the real root of the problem. Man, that's awesome. Do you know when I was in Vietnam, I had a guy that I grew up with and we were in school together. We went to church together. I had been over to his house. I knew his parents. I knew his brother. We weren't best friends, but we were friends. And we both got drafted and we both went to the same area in Vietnam. And uh, anyway, it's a long story, but this guy just got totally messed up in Vietnam. As far as I know, 20, 30 years later, he was still seep sleeping on the floor in his jungle fatigues with his boonie hat, and he had PTSD really, really bad. And we both had the same background, grew up in the same church, had the same friends. And you know the difference? He got into some stuff in Vietnam. Again, I'm not trying to condemn him, but I'm saying that when you were in Vietnam, the government would pay every, I think it was 90 days, they had what they called a stand down and they would take you into the rear area where it was relatively safe. They would bring in these Filipino dancers and singers. They were actually prostitutes, but they would put on a program. And then after the program, you could have all of the sex that you wanted and the government gave you all of the booze that you could drink for three days. It was a drunken orgy. And did you know what? I was in the same situation that this guy was in. But the reason that he succumbed is because when you're over there, who's going to tell on you? Every, that's what everybody was doing. I was the only one that I was aware of out of 200 people that didn't participate. And so there was peer pressure for you to do this. And who was ever going to find out? These prostitutes wouldn't tell on you. Plus, you were thinking like, I could be killed tomorrow. And uh, I may not live. And there was, we were just so remote and so removed and under so much pressure that he just rationalized it. But you know why I didn't participate? I felt the same pressure. I remember standing outside on the beach in Chu Lai, Vietnam, and they had this uh, show going on. And there was 200 guys in there just screaming and yelling and whistling and doing all kinds of things. And I was standing out there the only person that didn't participate. And it was like there was a magnet trying to draw me in. I felt the pressure. And I this is before I prayed in tongues, but man, I was praying as much as I knew and resisting. And the reason I didn't participate is because of, my, of the Holy Spirit convicting me of my relationship with Jesus. This isn't what Jesus wanted me to do. Nobody would have found out. But one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to draw us close unto Him and, and build this relationship. Matter of fact, if you were to go back, I'm not going to take time to do this, but in John 14, 15, and 16, there's a number of times that He said that the Holy Spirit will testify of me. He won't speak of Himself. He will take of mine and reveal it unto you. A ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus, to draw us to Jesus. That is a ministry of the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and the specific sin of not trusting in Jesus the way we should. It's not a condemning ministry, but it's a ministry of love, that I love you, and it's always drawing us unto Him. I tell you, because the Holy Spirit has been misrepresented and been credited as being the one who gives us our guilt and our shame and our condemnation, it actually drives some people away from the Lord. You know, I've often watched these football games and they will come on and they'll show you uh, a beer commercial and they'll have these frogs talking or something and they make you laugh and feel good about it. Or they'll show these uh, horses, these Clydesdale running through the snow and just some beautiful thing. And they have something that either makes you laugh or something beautiful or feel good about their product. But the truth is, 
IF THEY WERE TO SHOW YOU SOME WINO LAYING IN A GUTTER WHO'S PUKED ALL OVER HIMSELF AND HIS FAMILY HAS REJECTED HIM AND HERE HE IS HOMELESS AND LIVING IN THE GUTTER, AND IF THEY WERE TO SHOW YOU THOSE IMAGES AND MAKE YOU ASSOCIATE THEIR PRODUCT WITH SOMETHING NEGATIVE, I GUARANTEE IT WOULD TANK THEIR SALES. SEE, THEY, do, they GO OUT OF THEIR WAY TO MAKE YOU FEEL GOOD AND HAVE SOME GOOD FEELING ASSOCIATED WITH THEIR PRODUCT. WELL, IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM, THE CHURCH HAS ASSOCIATED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT OF THESE FEELINGS OF GUILT AND SHAME AND CONDEMNATION. THAT IS NOT THE HOLY SPIRIT. THE HOLY SPIRIT IS NOT THE ONE CONDEMNING YOU. SATAN CONDEMNS YOU. YOUR OWN CONSCIENCE CONDEMNS YOU. OTHER PEOPLE CONDEMN YOU. BUT THE HOLY SPIRIT IS NOT CONDEMNING YOU. THE HOLY SPIRIT IS ONLY TELLING YOU THAT JESUS LOVES YOU. YOU NEED TO TRUST. YOU NEED TO BELIEVE ON HIM. QUIT, QUIT USING THESE OTHER THINGS TO SUBSTITUTE WHAT GOD IS MEANT TO DO IN YOUR LIFE. IF YOU AREN'T SATISFIED WITH YOUR MATE, IT'S NOT YOUR MATE THAT'S THE PROBLEM. YOU JUST AREN'T TRUSTING GOD. MAN, YOU COULD TURN TO THE BOOK OF HOSEA AND SEE THAT HOSEA EVEN LOVED A PROSTITUTE, AND AFTER SHE LEFT HIM, HE WENT AND BOUGHT HER BACK AND, and TOOK HER BACK. GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. YOU CAN DEPEND UPON GOD, AND GOD WILL NEVER FAIL. IT'LL HOPE ALL THINGS, BELIEVE ALL THINGS, ENDURE ALL THINGS. IT'LL NEVER FAIL. 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 13. THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL BUILD YOU UP AND MINISTER TO YOU. HE'S A POSITIVE MINISTRY, AND WE NEED TO GET TO WHERE WE ASSOCIATE THIS POSITIVE MINISTRY OF THE HOLY SPIRIT INSTEAD OF THE GUILT AND CONDEMNATION THAT HAS OFTEN BEEN ATTRIBUTED TO HIM. SO JESUS SAID, IT'S BETTER FOR US TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT IN US THAN IT IS TO HAVE JESUS WITH US. AND WHY IS THAT? BECAUSE WHEN HE HAS COME, HE WILL REPROVE THE WORLD OF SIN AND OF RIGHTEOUSNESS AND OF JUDGMENT. NOT THE SIN THAT PEOPLE HAVE THOUGHT OF THAT HE'S CONDEMNING US, BUT HE WILL CONVICT US OF ONE THING, THAT YOU AREN'T TRUSTING ME. I WANT RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU. YOU NEED TO TRUST ME. MAKE ME YOUR SOURCE. DON'T TURN TO OTHER SUBSTANCE TO DEAL WITH YOUR PROBLEMS. DON'T TURN TO LYING TO DEAL WITH YOUR PROBLEMS. DON'T MISREPRESENT YOUR PRODUCT. TRUST ME. I'LL PROMOTE YOU, AND THINGS LIKE THIS. THAT'S HOW THE HOLY SPIRIT DEALS WITH US. I'M GOING TO TELL YOU, THAT'S AWESOME. MAN, THE HOLY SPIRIT IS A FRIEND. THE HOLY SPIRIT IS THERE TO HELP YOU, TO ENCOURAGE YOU. AND I JUST WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT IT'S ACTUALLY BETTER TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT WITH US THAN TO HAVE JESUS IN HIS PHYSICAL BODY. YOU KNOW, I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT ON OUR PROGRAM TOMORROW IS GOING TO BE MY LAST DAY. I'M GOING TO CONTINUE TO TALK ABOUT THESE OTHER TWO THINGS HERE OF RIGHTEOUSNESS AND OF JUDGMENT. BUT I'VE SUMMARIZED THESE 10 REASONS THAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT FOR FOUR WEEKS IN THIS LITTLE BOOKLET ENTITLED 10 REASONS IT'S BETTER TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND THIS IS A FREE GIFT TO YOU. I WOULD REALLY ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET IT. THIS IS A BRIEF SUMMARY OF WHAT I'VE TALKED ABOUT HERE ON TELEVISION. AND THEN WE HAVE MY TEACHING EITHER IN CD OR IN DVD FORM. AND uh, WE'RE TALKING ABOUT THESE 10 REASONS IT'S BETTER TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND I PROMISE YOU THAT WE NEED TO UNDERSTAND THIS. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS OVER IN 2 PETER CHAPTER 1, IT SAYS, ALL THINGS THAT PERTAIN UNTO LIFE AND GODLINESS COME THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM THAT HAS CALLED US TO GLORY AND VIRTUE. IF WE DON'T KNOW THE TRUTH, THE TRUTH CAN'T SET US FREE. AND WE NEED TO UNDERSTAND THE TRUTH ABOUT THE HOLY SPIRIT. THIS LITTLE BOOKLET AND THESE TEACHINGS, DVDs OR CDs WILL HELP YOU. REMEMBER, TOMORROW IS MY LAST DAY TO MAKE THESE AVAILABLE. SO PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU ALL THIS INFORMATION, AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE CALL OR WRITE AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW FOR THE GOSPEL TRUTH. YOU SAY IN THE NAME OF JESUS, I'M NOT GOING BY WHAT I SEE. I GO BY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THERE'S MORE THAN JUST THIS PHYSICAL REALM. THERE'S ALSO A SPIRITUAL REALM. I DON'T CARE WHAT THIS LOOKS LIKE. I KNOW WHAT GOD'S WORD SAYS. I WAS TOLD THAT I WOULD ALWAYS HAVE SEVERE ASTHMA AND FOOD ALLERGIES. I WAS BORN MISSING THE LEFT SIDE OF MY HEART WITH A VERY SMALL CHANCE OF LIVING. THE DOCTORS INDICATED THAT I HAD A PERMANENT BRAIN INJURY AND THAT I WOULD NEVER FUNCTION IN MAINSTREAM SOCIETY AGAIN. I'M TIM MCDERMOTT AND MY BROTHER AND I WERE TOLD THAT WE WOULD NEVER RECOVER FROM AUTISM. FROM A YOUNG AGE I HAD SEVERAL DIAGNOSES INCLUDING ASPERGER'S SYNDROME, DISEXECUTIVE SYNDROME AND COMMUNICATION DISORDERS. MY BROTHER JAMES WAS DIAGNOSED WITH AUTISM BEFORE HE TURNED THREE. FOR YEARS IT SEEMED LIKE WE WOULD NEVER BE NORMAL. BUT THEN MY PARENTS STUMBLED ACROSS THE HEALING JOURNEY OF HANNA TERRIDES. A FEW WEEKS LATER WE WENT TO ANDREW'S FREE GRACE AND FAITH CONFERENCE WHERE WE WERE HEALED OF AUTISM. TODAY, TEN YEARS LATER, I'M STILL WALKING IN MY COMPLETE HEALING. 
and I am not alone. I haven't needed my inhaler in years, and now I eat whatever I want. My heart grew back its missing piece, and the doctors cannot explain it. Today, I am completely healed, and I get to teach God's truth about healing. Because people like you partnered with Andrew O'Mac Ministries, we have all been given our lives back. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, but there are still millions of lives out there looking for the same truth that set us free. Will you help us bring this message to them? The word needs to get out to change people's lives. Please consider a partnership. Please partner with this ministry, it's amazing. Please consider being a partner with this ministry. You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. You know, my whole ministry is just about encouraging people to take the seed of God's Word and let it work in your heart. And of course, we do that through television, through materials that we put out. But the greatest way we have of impacting anybody is our Caris Bible College. I tell you, it is discipleship on steroids. We see people come in one way and leave a different way. I promise you that this could change your life. So check out our Caris Bible College with many locations around the world. We are now enrolling for fall and spring semesters. Visit discovercaris.com or call 719-635-1111 to find out more about the Caris experience. Caris Bible College, change your life, change the world. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? Follow Andrew on social media today. Learn how to live a life full of God's power when you get Andrew's brand new teaching title, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit. As a special offer, Andrew is giving away his booklet, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit, as his gift to you, absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit is also available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast, or as a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software the Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 